Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia, and I am the mom of three small children. I teach a kindergartner, a pre k -er, and I have a little baby who is seven months old. And today I wanted to share with you what I have in my homeschool basket. I don't really do a formal curriculum with my girls, just whatever comes up and what is fun. And we just kind of go with it because right now we're not doing anything too formal. Um, they just really wanted to do school and learn their ABCs and a few different things. So I picked up some books from Barnes and Noble and a few other things along the way. I will share with you those things now. So this is the basket that I keep all of our stuff in. It's just a simple little basket and I store it on this shelf right here. And that way every day we can use my girl, everybody knows where it is, and sometimes my girls will pull it out when it's time to start school, and they will just start taking their books out and doing what they need to do. Very simple, same method every day. So the first thing I want to share with you that is in my homeschool basket is this. This is just a bunch of little magnets that came with the Melissa and Doug calendar. Okay, so but as you can see, this actually outdated in 2019, and so um, we don't use the year anymore. We just use that whole square for the date but um, we do use the month the date the the days the season the temperature the weather and then any special holidays or activities and feelings we talk about those and then I just cut it was actually like two pieces and the bottom piece actually kept the magnets on it the extra ones but I don't use those so I just cut that off and we use that and I store all of my magnets in here. These are the ones we use every day, and then these are just like seasonal or once a year kind of things, months. Yeah, you can see the years, we don't use those. So the next thing that I keep inside my basket are these little pouches that have paper in them. All I did was went into Microsoft Word and I pulled out, or I copied, you can actually stick these in here and then kids can write on them and it's um, it erases really easily. So they just use washable markers uh, from their little collection and do that. And so as we're going down, they just circle the days of the month and, excuse me, the months of the year, whatever month it is, day of the week, the season, all these little things. And it helps them to apply what they're learning with um, phonics. So we're like, okay, it's June. Can you find the J, J, June? And then they can see the J and they circle it. Um, same with Monday. And then they see why they're learning their numbers down here because one of the applications of numbers is the date, right? So that's what we do. And then on the back, um, when we're talking about the, the season, or excuse me, the temperature and the weather, they can circle um, these things over here. This I just found in a Google search. I just Googled something like kids weather chart and these things popped up and then the same with their feelings so we can talk about that too. we talk about that every day and what they're feeling and they really enjoy it and then each child has their own so the other thing that i have in here is a visual timer these things are amazing because the child can actually see the time disappearing and i used to use this for t tv time but they don't watch a lot of television anymore except during rest time so I can actually do things. I can do my YouTube stuff that I don't normally get to do um, if they were awake. And so they don't nap, so we just kind of got rid of that. But anyway, this just lets me know when it's time to move on from our story time. But we like, so after we finish our calendar, we move on to, to this book called Childcraft. And it's actually, this is actually a whole series that I bought at a yard sale. And I think there's like 12 or 15 books, but this one's on poetry and there's some really interesting poems in here. So I read a few of these right now. We're on the seasons. Uh, I think we're reading about rain and snow and different types of weather right now. So we read a couple poems a day and they really like that. And usually while I'm reading, they might play with the magnets or kind of draw on their little pocket things that I just showed you that have the weather and the dates and all that. Something just to keep their little hands busy, but they do find it very interesting. The other thing that we have been doing, and we just finished this. Um, my oldest, my girls are really, really little. 
my mother-in-law got these books for them and it's in Spanish and English and I tried working on my girls with Spanish but they weren't really interested and so what I started doing is using this book every day we go through and we play I Spy but with a phonic so normally you would say I Spy something green or whatever color with this I go through and I tell the girls all the let all the names of these all the words will say cake candle balloon and we'll do all of them and I'll say okay Liza I spy something that starts with k k k and she'll think about it and she'll go cake and I do the same with Lydia and we they do that and we do this with every page and they really enjoy it so that's just to start getting them thinking about the idea of phonics and what thing, the sounds that things make. And my oldest caught on pretty quickly, but she's also four and a half, so well, almost five now. And my three and a half year old, she, it took her a little bit to kind of figure it out, but now she really gets it and she really enjoys this game. And I have a couple other of these books. I think there's one on shapes and one on colors and just words. In general so what I think I'm gonna do is just keep doing it because they love it and maybe we'll take it up a notch and make it a little bit more difficult I'll have to think about how to do that but um, but they really enjoy this I have a pencil box for both girls um, each pencil box has a pencil crowns their erasable marker for their little pocket their calendar pockets and crowns pencil erasable marker eraser those are the two things they each have um this is phonics bingo i just went on google and found this and put it copy and pasted it into word and printed this off um I, we didn't do this today but um, i'm gonna when i get some pockets to laminate this i'm gonna laminate it and then we'll just play bingo uh, i think it'll be a fun little game to help teach them phonics okay so i have so each of my girls has some um, um phonetic things that they struggle with as far as saying like one child had a problem saying her g and her k sound so we work on that i went to i think it's mommyspeechtherapy.com and she has these um she has these little picture things for each sound and so i printed them off and every day we just go over them and so far i've noticed just after like maybe I'm, i think we've been doing this for about two months my girl's speech are improving so well we're not saying that, and we're saying the k and the g now, not the, the t or the d for these words. So, so much is improving just going over these repetitively. And also, both my girls, they still say y or w for the l sound. So, I just do this with them to help them start thinking about saying the l. Then, I have this little, my mother-in-law got me these little sight word books. And so each week uh, we, we do a different book and my, my daughter, my oldest, will read through it. This is something only she does. Um, I just feel like she's more ready for sight words. And then I also take, um, I think this is the third book we've done. So I took some index cards and cut them in half and I just write down, uh, each book has two words. So I write down the words and she just, we just practice them. And so that helps her to memorize the different sight words in these books and to just keep refreshing her memory and any and several times if we're reading a book i'll say what's this word if it's one of our sight words just to kind of help her start trying to find them or to start planting little seeds of oh hey there's that word i know that word as we're reading back in march when i started setting aside time to do intentional school with my girls i went to barnes and noble and i looked over all of their books or curriculums for kindergarten and pre-k and the two that I found that I really liked or looked good were there was highlights, which I'll get to in a minute, and then this Brain Quest, these Brain Quest books. These books, uh, my girl, both my girls have been doing from the beginning. They have some really interesting things in them. Um, of course, shapes, colors, ABCs, phonics, um, spelling, vocabulary, and then other skills things like sorting and matching and sequencing patterns. They have some good... They have some pretty good ideas to teach children in here. I don't think we're gonna buy this brand again because the highlights is a little bit more fun for them. There's a lot more games and funner ways of teaching, so to speak. Is that even a word, funner? So the other one we bought is 
highlights. And this is exactly like the magazine subscription. They have a lot of fun games where I just really like these and both my girls have a book. There's this one for kindergarten and then my preschooler has this one. I had to spiral bind it because it started breaking the first week we had it. So I just took it to a print shop and they bound it for me. And I actually like, I wish highlights actually came in spiral bound, but they don't. So, oh well, there's that. I just bought this one a couple days ago at, again, at Barnes & Noble. This is just, I don't, I've never did phonics, or at least I don't remember them. I Obviously in my head I know what they are, but this goes through and breaks down each letter or sound phonetically, and we just go over it. Again, it's nothing too formal, and it's just introducing the idea to my children of the different sounds. We've played I Spy. So they're hearing the sounds and they're saying b b b balloon but now they're seeing it. The girls don't actually mark. We did this one today, the k sound. My girls don't actually mark in these. Um, we just go through and we talk about it and they know it. And um, I really want to train their ear more than I train them to write because the ear really is the organ for sound. I think. And the last two things that I do, um, these are these kind of like trace and erase, you say the wipe off books. Um, each girl has one. I, they're finishing up their, their current books, the ones I just showed you, they're finishing up those workbooks. And so what I did is I went on Amazon and I bought the summer learning package. It's, um, they say it's like a bridge between each grade level. So it would be like the bridge between preschool and pre-k and then pre-k and kindergarten and these books came with them what we'll do is we'll do our calendar our poetry and our i spy game together and then i'll send one child to the table to work on this while i work with the other child individually on um the phonics and then their their workbooks and the other little things that they do by themselves with me so that's how we do school. And it usually takes about an hour and a half, hour to an hour and a half to do everything. I try to keep it short because they are so little. I don't want to do anything too formal. I don't want to push anything on them. If they seem like they're getting bored or not interested, I try to, well, I ask them, do you, do you want to stop? Usually they'll say no, but if I can tell their, their little brain is done, then we, we shut it down because I don't want to, I don't want to push them too hard and make them not like school. So that is what we do and um, try to keep it fun, simple, interesting. So thank you for watching this video and um, let me know in the comments what you think.